What's going on, everyone? Welcome to another episode of the Fit, Healthy, and Most of All Happy podcast. I'm your coach and host, Josh, here with... Co-host and co-coach, KEG, and I'm in the house. And welcome to Motivation Monday, where we are here to get you inspired for the week ahead to answer some of the questions you submitted, as well as share what's on our thoughts, what's popular in the fitness industry, as well as some quotes that really inspired us. And we're going to go ahead and start off with our community quote today. So every week, we like to pull a quote from someone from the community so we can get another little bonus quote because we feel like two's not enough so we made that transition to having three incredible quotes and this week i decided to pull it from instagram so if you're not following us there our instagram is at colossus fit c-o-l-o-s-s-u-s-f-i-t and we post a lot of good content there we post informative reels nutrition content training content we really just want that to be a hub of incredible information where you can actually get more visuals past this podcast so it's really important you take advantage and make sure to follow us there but the quote that stood out to me the most that i'm really happy to share and i love the way it was phrased was uh, i forget what was her name sorry do you remember Kyle will pull it up. So we can't remember her name, but she said, chef's kiss, a simple quote, but a great quote. And that is, if you change nothing, nothing changes. And I just thought that was so powerful and it was such an incredible reminder that to see change, to get to a new level, we gotta do something different than we've done. We've said it before, but hope is not a strategy. If you just say, I'm gonna do the same thing, I'm gonna hope it works out better than last time, that's the definition of insanity, doing the same thing, expecting a different result. Instead, you gotta look at your situation and say, where do I need to change? Where do I need to grow? Where do I need to do that thing that's a little bit uncomfortable, that's a metric of something new that is gonna help me advance and get to that next level? So I can't pull it up right now. We're filming on our phones, but a huge shout out to every single one of you who submitted a quote. And also, once again, it will be on YouTube. We do film this every single week and post it on YouTube, on Spotify, on Apple, regardless, wherever you are that you are watching this, we appreciate you all and it means the world to us. But my quote for this week is quite simple. You could be good today, instead you choose tomorrow. And this is just a friendly reminder to take action now. Whatever it is that you're striving to achieve, whatever it is that you want to accomplish, don't wait until the future. And I see so many people doing this, oh, I'm gonna get started on Monday, I'm gonna get started next month. We all wanna get in shape, we all wanna accomplish these great things, but it's the people who actually take action, who put their one foot forward, who you know invest in the coaching process, who sign up for our challenge, like it's those people that really get to see the great results. And on top of this quote, I thought it was pretty powerful. I saw the one thing fools all have in common is they're all getting ready to begin. They're all saying, I'm going to start this date. I'm going to do it in the future. They're always getting ready. Whereas you see the people who are getting the results, the people who we post every single week on our Instagram stories, who are just starting to get to the next level on their fitness journey are the ones who aren't getting ready. They've actually pulled the trigger. They've said, hey, I'm going to do this. They've invested in themselves. And this isn't just fitness wise. I feel like this can be anything. Don't procrastinate. Get started now. Whatever it is that you want to do, don't just say you're going to do it. Do it. And that's my inspiration for this Monday. There's nothing worse than putting something off. We've all been there. We said, oh, I'm going to start on Monday. That's that's going to be my big day. And then spend the weekend doing all the things you know you won't be able to do when you're on a diet and you end up imploding and doing more damage. And then Monday you lose that motivation because it's so far in the future. And it just becomes a cycle where you keep putting it off and saying one day, one day, one day. The best time is right now. Well, the best time was yesterday. The second best time is right now. So whatever you're procrastinating on, whatever you want to achieve, start taking steps there. We've been saying this a lot, but journey of a thousand miles just starts with one step and incredible transformations, changes in your life, building new habits, begin the same way. So you just got to have faith in yourself to take that first step and take that action. So I think that is an incredible quote and I'm really excited to jump into mine. And my quote is actually from Aristotle this week. And that is be a free thinker and don't accept everything you hear as truth. Be critical and evaluate what you believe in. So previously, even a good example of this, we did a, a review on the documentary Game Changers that came out. Everyone and their brother wanted to switch to a plant-based side. And when you actually looked through what was discussed in the documentary and you had other scientists and other experts of the field kind of debating it, you realize that a lot of it was a little bit more of an opinion piece, not necessarily a factual piece. And it can be so hard because we can get so inspired and motivated and charged up from watching one piece of content and want to just inject it as truth or put in our life. And I've discussed this with other people recently. You could see something on TikTok and it could say, fun fact, X, Y, Z. And then you can go and regurgitate that because in your mind, you see that as a reputable source, but some random person that could be saying anything. And that's where you see kids being hospitalized with these crazy challenges and just really important, especially on the internet. And we say this as people who are informative. We like to say we like do we do uh, 
edutainment or something like that. So we like it to be educational and uh, entered infotainment. Like, infotainment, yeah. that's the one. So it's info and it's entertainment all in one. But anything we say, we say with confidence. We've looked at studies, we've done research, we have personal application. We're really careful about what we say because that's because we care about you. You're listening to this, you want to become a better version of yourself. And I don't want to say anything that is just an opinion, a thought that is going to cause you to actually not get towards that because then you get discouraged and you end up doing worse. So it's really important when you get something and even if it's the most exciting thing in the world, you start to do more research into it, you formulate your own opinion. There's also nothing wrong with trying something out, see how it affects you personally because we're all so different. And science is a powerful thing, but even science is more so a consensus of belief of studies. And that's where the other thing is you see science getting updated all the time. So it's really important you stay up to date. I know this can be incredibly overwhelming, but you're doing a great start by listening to us, listening to a variety of sources, making sure that what's being said is true, making sure that the people you're listening to have really good character, really good values, and they aren't just peddling quick fixes for you. And it's just something that really came into my mind because you really do need to be critical and evaluate what you believe in because you can go on a whole wrong kind of path if you're not actually taking the time to make sure what you're seeing is right. Because you hear that your friend who looks really good says carbs are horrible, never eat carbs again. You stop eating carbs, you're actually not learning about why things work or what the truth of that statement is or whether that's just one person's personal experience. And it can be so easy to relate the two and think that there's only one way to do something but case in point the more you can kind of research and dig into things that interest you is amazing and that's where just being intrigued researching even lately i've been working on when i hear something even if it's a reputable source i'll just do a little bit of research on it and it's really nice to say oh wow this is true or i looked into this a bit more and this is actually the direct case and it's just a really powerful thing in general so something i wanted to share today for my quote I really like that because even when you look at fitness, there's so many ways to get to like that one destination. And it is kind of frustrating how there will be so many people who will say different things, even who will come up and be like, oh, this is what works for me. And a lot of times people will take that and just be like, okay, cool, I'm going to try that. But when you actually sit down and logically think, why is it that this thing works for that person? Is it because whatever, like whatever you want to just like think of, you can actually just start to think for yourself and realize, oh, maybe that's not the best for me, but I'm going to keep going on my path. And even for success, there'll be some people who say, you've got to do this. Like this is the best thing to do. And when you just kind of sit down and think that there's so many different ways to become successful and actually think for yourself, you know what? And even just start to pass on different things. Things because that's where a lot of people I feel like get messed up, especially within fitness, because you'll be sitting in the sauna, you hear this one person saying, I tried this new thing. It's amazing. But you actually start to think and kind of look into it yourself, maybe pull up different studies, like whatever it is. You can even ask us as always, you know, we're, we keep it real. We get a lot of DMs on Instagram. Hey, I heard about this thing. Someone just uh, shared with us the other day, um, Dave Thompson, shout out, amazing guy. And he asked us, he said, hey, Kino Body's just sharing always. He works out two times a week, like all this other stuff. Is it true? And I'm like, I sat down and, th- and thought, you know, and, and there's guys like him out there who will potentially share a lot of stuff because they share what people want to hear it's hard to believe because he's someone who just is so into his fasting side of things I'm like first of all it's hard to trust him but at the same time what he does now isn't also what got him uh, to where he was as well things weren't you know for me right now he's more so maintaining like there's just so many things to look at but you look at something that he does and say oh I'm gonna follow this because it works because look he's in shape but when you actually think about it for yourself that you come up with a lot of different things and a lot of realizations and I thought that was a great thought or great quote and I just wanted to add on to that We've also said it before, but you got to think, why is someone saying what they're saying to you? Like, what do they have to personally gain? If I say, this is my product right here, and if you take this, you're going to look just like me overnight. I was struggling until I did this. It's hard to believe. Let's be honest here. That makes no sense. But when we're saying things, especially when they're not the most sexy things in the world, like being consistent, tracking your macros, training hard, understanding what a good training regimen is, these are things that you can say, okay, well, they're not necessarily gaining a ton from this. Whereas when there's a product or a quick solution or a band you put over your waist, like stuff like that, it appeals to your desire to get things done quickly. And it's that old complex of trainers that take a bunch of steroids to just say, take my product or eat this one food or whatever it may be. It's easier to market. And we mentioned before, we can make a lot more money if we just leaned into one school of thought. And that's not to say that each school of thought can't have their benefits or it can't be the best for you. Maybe it is the best course for you to be on a vegetarian diet because you have like moral 
beliefs that you don't think you should be in that. That's totally awesome. I think that's awesome to be respected. Just like someone else could do really well on keto, that could be the best position for them. Intermittent fasting could be great for someone. Normal eating could be better for someone else. We're all so unique and we got to look at what's available, see what's most logical, but it's just such an overstatement to say that there's only one way to do things. And that's why we always say on this podcast, it depends because there are so many nuances to it. And I hope that by you listening to this podcast, you're starting to get a deeper level of fitness and you're better able to identify these things in general. So really, really good discussion there. And that'll take us into our thoughts for this week. I, I see your first one here, Kyle. I like it. Let's start it off. So yeah, I was at brunch the other day and you know, the menu obviously has calories. Some places do, some places don't, but it said like 750 calories for whatever it is that I got and I was eating it. Uh, it came to me, I was like, this is definitely more. But long story short, it got me thinking because a lot of times I feel like people struggle on their fitness journey because they'll plug this in and be like, okay, cool. I'm in a deficit. I'm eating well. I'm, I made my, my right choice, whatever it is. And they're like, awesome. But I got thinking because they brought some syrup, they brought some uh, ketchup, they brought other things, you know, to go with the home fries, the syrup with the waffle, all that other stuff. And I'd say for the most part, I'm guessing that they don't take that stuff into consideration, right? The, you know, 50 plus calories, probably hundred calories for the syrup, at least the ketchup, depending on how much you use. I know a lot of people use lots of ketchup. Um, the creamer that came with the coffee as well. I know sometimes people have bottomless coffee at these places. So these things alone made me think there's an extra couple hundred calories that most people won't actually consider and it's just a good reminder that like yeah you're not going to be always going out to brunch and you know it's something that will take place here and there but there's a lot of things day to day that may think that that you may think that you're making progress and you're logging accurately and you're doing well but I'd say one of the biggest challenges I have for everybody here is if you are on this fat loss journey trying to get to the next level if you can tighten up your accuracy and try to just be more honest um, and like look at things from a different perspective versus just like what you want to put in it makes such a big difference and the other thing to consider as well as like, I knew it wasn't 750, right? Um, but at the end of the day, like you realize that a lot of places don't actually kind of, it's not, they just have to put a number, right? There's nobody sitting there just each time checking to make sure, okay, this is accurate. And I will say another really big important thing is like, you can always make progress while going out to these things eating out, like doing whatever it is, but you will definitely see the best progress by doing things on your own. And once again, you can fit these things here and there, but the people who are consistently going out and just, you know, that every single day they're doing that, you know, extra meal and whatever it is, it's very hard to succeed, especially if you're not fully being honest, because that's where a lot of people struggle as well. And that's the only thing that I had on the top of my head. And I just want to share it to you on this uh, amazing Monday. I always like to say a restaurant's job is to make food as tasty as possible. And oftentimes it's going to be done with more oil, more butter. It shocks people to see how many calories or even a tablespoon of oil it can be upwards of 100 calories, which is quite a lot. And it's not to say oil is horrible for you. It's totally fine. I love cooking with oil. I think there's a lot of benefits within that as well. But when you're having tons of it and when it's just drenched in oil, butter and sugar, it's going to taste delicious. And that's their job. They want you in their restaurant. And when they're doing the nutrition test for this, they prepare the meal properly probably how it's meant to be prepared. And they're not just, they're measuring stuff out. They're not just absolutely got that oil, just dripping it on top, throwing extra butter, extra salt, all these things. So it's really important when you go out, you're honest with yourself. I'll eat things sometimes. I'll have it long and I'll look at it and say, oh, this is 400 calories. We use the example of us going to that cookie shop, Kyle making the joke saying, ooh, if it's only two or 180 calories, I'll have two of them. And then the person's like, that's per serving. And then he's like, how many servings are in the cookie? And they're like, four. They want you to get in there and say, oh, this isn't too bad for me. It's insanely delicious. I'm going to come here a lot. It makes no sense for them to say, hey, this is a ton of calories. It's also super unhealthy, but it's tasty. Some places that's their shtick at like the really fun, crazy big burger places, uh, really extravagant dessert places. But in general, it's really important you're honest with yourself. And when I'm eating out and I'm at places, it's always good to be aware of these things. Like Kyle mentioned, cream in your coffee. You can easily, you have enough coffees, get three, 400 calories out of that, especially if you're going cream and sugar that can stack up really, really quick. Syrup, uh, man on top of things, mayo dips for fries, all these things really do go a long way. And when you're eating out, you need to be that much more on point because if you're not, you're gonna underlog it, you're gonna think you do well, and then you're gonna be upset the next day when you realize weight's gone up, you're actually kind of going backwards from progress. And it can just be this mess where you think you've done well, but you haven't, and that can make you hate eating out and then you won't eat out so you can stick to your diet, but then you're gonna hate your diet because you can never eat out and see friends. So it's really important you find that position of moderation and I find you can have the most success by just being honest with yourself. And this was an excellent reminder of that. Yeah, that's really all I have. Um, the only other thing actually I was thinking of is just how 
Lately, I feel like I've mentioned some of the best habits that you can have, which is obviously not procrastinating, delaying gratification. I know Josh has shared is one of his favorite, but I'd say being patient is something that a lot of people struggle with, myself included. And I was thinking of this because I was designing all the criteria for the summer shred uh, just challenge that we have taking place in a week. And I was sending it over to a graphic person and I sometimes get frustrated because there's a lot of back and forth and it usually takes a couple attempts and stuff like that. But the reason I'm bringing this up is because I kind of started to realize that most of the time you can't get things right in one go. I'd love to think that, but I realize everybody's human. And even within the fitness journey, I think there's a lot of people who are super impatient. I was just thinking of this on my drive here today. And I was thinking there's people who start to diet for a week. They don't see the progress. They just want everything just like that. They want like one go and then it's just like that. You start to do an exercise and you try to do it perfectly, but you don't get it. And you're just like, oh, well, I'm not going to deadlift anymore. My back's rounding, my back's hurting, right? But a lot of times like things that kind of are meant to, to work out to be better and things that like just, yeah, you, you want to want to be super quick it ends up just taking a little bit of time. It ends up taking a bit of practice. It ends up taking a little bit of back and forth and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, I'm actively working on like just being like a more patient person. I can't say I'm bad at all, but uh, there's like little moments. I'm just like, no, chill out. It's okay. You know, take a little bit more time, but you know, uh, nothing worth coming, uh, nothing worth having comes easy. That's another quote that I wanted to share and just something else that was on the top of my head. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and jump into our client shout out. Who do we got? So this week we have Grecia, and uh, she has been working with Coach Jason and just absolutely crushing it, about 20 pounds down and just completely different body composition. You can see rock hard abs. Uh, if you are, are watching on YouTube, you can click down below and just go to our Fit Healthy and Happy Podcast YouTube channel. You can see the photo on the screen there and I'm just super amazed and super impressed with how amazing she's been doing and her continued progress. Once again, the people who just continuously show up, who continuously invest in themselves and she's crushing it. But her biggest tip here, number one, we always ask, hey, what's your favorite tips that you'd like to share with everyone and she had said this I can't stress this enough hire a coach you need a professional to guide you and be there when you need it you go to your MD when you have health issues and you need to go to your coach with workout slash nutrition uh, nutrition issues to get reliable info and you heard it from her. I'm just so excited about that. And uh, yeah, just I think it's awesome, especially going into the summer shred challenge. 60 days of just relentless amazing work, accountability, prizes up to $5,000 worth, and it's just gonna be absolutely phenomenal. We are one week away. You are not gonna to wanna to be on the sidelines for this. We have all the criteria ready to go, the prizes, and we're just super excited because this is gonna be something that's gonna get you to the next level. The accountability is gonna be insane. All you have to do is send us a message on Instagram with the keyword summer challenge to our Instagram, which is at Colossus Fit, C-O-L-O-S-S-U-S-F-I-T, and we'll make sure you're the right fit. We'll get you the right info that you need and get you some incredible results and be there for you every step of the way. Don't hesitate, send us that message and we will take care of you. And with these transformations, we're not just hoping these people see change. You're noticing people from every walk of life with different goals, whether it's doing your first bikini competition, your first bodybuilding show, you're learning to power lift, you just wanting to have a body you can be proud of, to get energy to play with your kids. No matter what your goal is, we will get you there. And we've designed the Summer Shred Challenge to be done in a way where we have a, a challenge mode, which is like the level one mode where it's gonna be hard, you're gonna see progress. And then we have the level two challenge for those of you that are just all out overachievers, who wanna push it, continue just to build the best version of you. So no matter where you are in your life, we're gonna build a custom program just for you a custom nutrition plan and mindset and as well as just a vision for you to see change so much more than you thought you ever could and you're seeing these transformations we want you to be next do not miss out on this one week left spots are going to go quick so to take advantage of that once again you can go ahead and message us summer challenge on instagram to at colossus fit c-o-l-o-s-s-u-s-f-i-t now into the first question out of the mailbag the first question is how do you get back into routine after falling off and losing motivation my biggest thing is just taking it one step at a time, brick by brick, step by step, habit by habit. I think a lot of times people think they have to have everything planned for the rest of the week. They need to just get into five workouts and stuff like that. And it can definitely be overwhelming, especially if your motivation is a little bit low. That's a lot. That's a lot on your plate. And 
I just, I'm such a fan of focusing on that one thing in front. So especially coming off that sickness a few weeks ago, I definitely felt like, holy, like I'm a little bit weaker, a little bit lower energy. And I said, you know what? I'm going to start with one thing at a time. I'm going to get back to my morning walk, 15, 20 minutes, nothing crazy. If I thought about everything that I wanted to do in the day, I felt like it would have been a little overwhelming or the rest of the week. But I said, just this one thing. That's all it takes, just do it. And I think that's where, I love that quote by Nike, just do it, or that saying, um, because a lot of times people think they have to have the perfect plan, so they have to have everything strategized, I guess, they have to have everything put into place to even just take action, but it's like, no, just do it. Um, My other thing is just letting the momentum carry. I think it's so important to realize when you're getting that momentum back, sorry, um, that it's just, it's there, and just one step at a time, you keep pushing forward, and it's like, next thing you know, you've just had a regular day, you're back into it, and then my other thing that I'm really passionate about is just um, refocusing on your goals, your why. Like, what is it that I'm trying to accomplish here? Because I feel like a lot of times when we lose that momentum and that like just that motivation, we're not really up to date on what we're striving for. So that's going to be my last thing and the biggest thing that will definitely go a long way. I love all those tips. Those are absolutely incredible. My biggest thing is that to me, motivation is fickle. It's something you cannot rely on when you have it. It's incredible. It's a boost. It's amazing. But it's something I find we can work to try to enhance in our lives. But some days you'll do everything right and you will just not feel it. Even a good example is today. I woke up. I'm like, oh, I don't want to go on a walk. I went. I went on that walk. And I didn't want to do my work. But I'm like, I'm going to just do my task one step at a time. Got through it. And I went to the gym. I'm like, I do not want to hit legs. And I started doing my squats and my heavy weights. Got through my workouts. And because of that, you can see that I wasn't relying on motivation. Because if I was, I would have said, heck with this. I'm not doing anything. Said I built that discipline by being consistent and working that muscle of my mind to be able to get those things done. And I feel better because of it. Because in that moment, if I just said, I don't want to do these things, I'm going to end up sleeping in, skip my walk, do no work today, not work out. I would have felt way worse. And then I would have been way less motivated into the next day. Instead, by having that discipline, that's something that takes time. You shouldn't expect yourself to be perfect right away. But when you have the attitude that that's something you want to improve, it goes so much further. And even to understand there's times where you just will not be motivated. You may be in a slump. There's times where you'll be super motivated and things come super easy. When those times come, push that much harder. Take advantage of that step forward, those results. And you can find you can get to that next level. Then you say discipline, then motivation comes again. You just keep going up step after step. And before you know it, you're at the top of the staircase. So that was an excellent question. We really do hope that helps some of you. The second question we've got, and we haven't got this one in a while, but I do know this is something that is on a lot of people's minds. And that is what is the best fat burner to buy? So first and foremost, not all fat burners are truly useless. Myself and Kyle used to be sponsored by a company called EHP Labs, and they had a fat burner called OxyShred. We used to take it quite often, not truly for the fact of burning fat, more so as just of a pre-workout, Most fat burners in general are really just expensive sources of caffeine because the goal of fat burners is to increase fat loss by increasing your energy expenditure and decreasing your hunger signaling. So it has been shown in studies that some supplements like caffeine as well as capsaicin have been shown to increase your energy expenditure up by about 13%. So you are getting benefits from this. You're increasing your body's thermogenesis. You'll also see other things included in here such as green tea, such as Capsimax, as well as just caffeine in general. But very oftentimes the ones that come over the counter like this are just these simple ingredients. And these are things that are gonna give you the smallest little boost. It still comes down to good training, good nutrition. That's gonna be 95% of your results. Increasing your metabolism a little bit by way of having caffeine isn't gonna be the thing that breaks the camel's back and really gets you phenomenal results as much as people want to believe it will be. And in general, I like to stay away from these things because there are risks with having a ton of extra caffeine, such as being overly anxious, being overly irritated, getting a bad quality sleep, which is gonna net destroy your recovery and actually end up making your results worse. And that's why I don't recommend fat burners to anyone. Instead of good pre-workout, you can go ahead and get bulk of the benefits. And there are actually a lot of ingredients you should generally watch out for in fat burners. So the first is raspberry ketone so it has been shown to be effective in tests for animals but there's actually zero evidence base that it is effective for fat loss in humans so this is where it's tough you're taking something that was just done in a lab just being shown to work on animals 
if there is no proof in humans and at the end of the day you don't want to be taking on a bunch of stuff in your body that you know you don't need the second is hudia gordoni there's some really interesting names here but what can you expect from a fat burner so this is another common ingredient amongst fat burners and is claimed to suppress your appetite however this hasn't been proven in human models and it is actually mildly toxic so once again something you'll always want to avoid and you always want to think twice before buying this hydroxy cut back in the day was touted highly because it worked it was doing really well but it got banned for a reason it was messing up people's livers it's really hard on your system and any short-term solution like this is not good it's not going to get you anywhere instead it's really important you just learn how to have a healthy relationship with your diet learn about macros learn how to train hard you'll see better results you'll be healthier because of it and at our core we should be doing this for health it's okay if it's for vanity if it's for aesthetics but we don't want to be getting healthy by making ourselves less healthy and hurting our body so I would say clear fat burners. I think there's no necessary benefit to them. You can go ahead and take like a supplemented one as a pre, but I find they're overpriced and you're just better off by going with a simple pre-workout. Yeah, I remember when we used to have it, uh, the Oxy Shred, it, was, it just tasted good and it was free. So I was kind of like, oh, it's a good pre-workout with the caffeine and stuff. But once again, like we, our biggest mission is to help you guys look through kind of the nonsense and just avoid some of this stuff. And I know last week I was talking about all these drinks that people will spend hundreds of dollars on with these crazy bold promises. And if you look at marketing for a lot of these supplement companies, they say the world, like there's very few things out there that I'd say actually can live up to what they say they'll do. Like creatine and protein are like two of the greatest things. Pre-workout's awesome as well. But a lot of these things, man, they just hire the best marketers the best people to just write their you know pages and stuff that just say these insane things and uh yeah i just know so many people that will go out go to gnc popeyes like whatever i guess healthy planet and spend hundreds of dollars on these things but they haven't spent even just the nutrition like i could think of a hundred things that would be better such as just great nutrition you know groceries obviously hiring a coach taking part of our challenge getting your gym membership. Like there's just so many different things. So I'm really glad, Josh, I learned a lot there from everything he said there. So yeah, just a good reminder. And hopefully this was helpful for you. All right. Into the last and final question for today. And that is what are the best movements to stack on mass? This is a really good question. Honestly, I'm going to start by saying like having the right nutrition as I, it always comes back to nutrition. I know there's some people who will do all these movements, but not have the right protein the right calories so i wanted to start with that and and just kind of put that as like a little pre-thought as well so that's going to be always super important but at the end of the day i do believe that just the compounds will always give you the best bang for your buck. Um, I've always been a firm believer in just the squat, the bench press, the deadlift, the overhead press as well, if that's something you want to do, but just more like multi-joint movements, things that kind of do two things at once, I guess you could say, like even the deadlift, it's such a great full body exercise. We did some of those heavy deadlifts yesterday, today did heavy squats. I truly believe that those are some of the greatest things. Anything leg related to me as well is just so beneficial. I know a lot of people like skipping out on legs, but I find that every movement that you could do just helps you pack on some great mass, some great muscle mass. You get some great strength benefits and everything like that. But honestly, like I'd say things when you do think of it, okay, of course I love the accessories. I love just the single arm bicep curls. I love the tricep push downs. Those are usually targeting one muscle group at a time, but I'd say a good chunk of the workout usually does take place where you're targeting a bit more. And I'll even give you pull-ups for an example. It's not just that you're working your back. You work so much. You work your core because you have to stabilize. You work your entire back as well, like every muscle group in the back. Um, you also work your biceps because they're engaged as well. I would take that as like an incredible mass builder over like more specific single joint muscle groups as well. But I do believe they all have their purpose. So that's where some people struggle. They hear this and be like, oh, well, I'm not going to do bicep curls. But they do all have their purpose. But the biggest multi-joint movements definitely give you best bang for your buck. And especially if you lift heavy, it gives you some incredible benefits. Compounds go such a long way, especially if you're new to training. You can gain quite a lot by leaning into the bench, squat, deadlift. Just these power movements in general, OHP, heavy rows, they are definitely going to help you stack on some really good mass. Barbell lunges, these are big movements. They're hard. They're very taxing. They will take a lot out of you, and it's really important you do learn to do them correctly. But even from a primal basic level, it's very hard to do some of the more technical lifts if your form's not there. But something like a deadlift, it's like, can you pick this up? And your body has to find a way through it. Now, the 
downside with that, with it being so heavy and so hard, there is more opportunity to hurt yourself if done incorrectly. If you do it correctly, it is an incredibly safe movement and it's absolutely awesome to program in, but it's important you learn to develop into these things more. So there's nothing wrong with starting with dumbbell deadlifts, dumbbell squats, dumbbell bench, and advancing into these motions as you can do them better. But you wanna lean in in general as a rule of thumb into the things that are harder, the movements that are really hard that take the breath out of you that you feel exhaustion from where you're working a lot of your body, that's gonna help you stack on mass a lot faster. But as Kyle said, it's really important too if you wanna stack on mass that you are in a slight surplus or if you're a newer lifter, you can get away and you can see muscle get on really quickly. And there's just so many good movements out there as well. The less isolated, the more intense, the more heavy, it's gonna help you put on mass quicker, but you also wanna build the quality of that muscle. So for glutes, for instance, heavy hip thrusts are gonna just be absolutely powerful. Squats will go a long way, heavy Romanian deadlifts, there's just so many good movements and as great as it is to do like single arm donkey kicks on the cable, that's gonna help out some tone, it's gonna add some muscle, but I find you'll put on mass less quickly than you will with these big heavy duty compound movements. So some excellent questions today. I wanna thank everyone for tuning in and we really hope you enjoyed this episode. Once again, go ahead and drop a comment down below with your favorite quote if you're watching us on YouTube right now so you can potentially be featured in next week's episode. Otherwise, we're one week out from the Summer Shred Challenge. This is your chance, the question is, is, are you up for the challenge? Are you ready to be your fittest, healthiest, and happiest person? If so, go ahead and DM us saying summer challenge on Instagram to at Colossus Fit, C-O-L-O-S-S-U-S-F-I-T. We'll see you in the next episode. Peace out.